Good morning, evening, afternoon, our friends. Hello there and welcome back. So this was yesterday's first uh, video we did. This was a uh, Patreon only um, for obvious reasons, multiple reasons, but we do love to give back to those that have been supporting us and helping us to plant more things as, you know, this is what we have to do. We have to create our own little pockets of beautiful, productive, positive energy grids. Uh, and we can, we will, and, and we do. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. You know, there's so much to share with you guys. Well, you, did you know uh, that we had a warning out there from the EPA, new cyber attack alert as the U.S. water systems are in danger and they're urging immediate security upgrades. Um, yeah, I wanted to split today's videos into a little tighter grouping of topics. Um because there's a little bit more to go into without overwhelming people with uh, very long videos for those that don't have the time. But yeah, absolutely. Water, water, water. Don't you remember that the statements from some of the uh, members of <laughs> that certain forum that might be looking for a new, a new head uh, draconian leader? Yeah. Uh, they don't understand climate change. So... We will maybe uh, explore what they can't understand about water. Yeah, water is so important in so many places. Water, water everywhere. But can you safely drink any of it is the big question. You know, I'm looking at this. And this makes me very nervous because usually what they want you to do is they want you to upgrade to all the newest and greatest technologies, which have probably been put together with parts from you know where the fine dining country and giving them access so i don't know to me this makes me nervous and i i think the old ways of doing things even if there's somebody sitting outside the well pedaling a bike is probably the safest bet well yeah so many thoughts went through my head when you were saying that it makes me think about that jet that went missing and what we got was, no, it didn't crash. What we got what it was it was a test of hacking into the jet system. This was a military jet that they said disappeared. Then they said, oh, no, it crashed, I think, in the Carolinas. But meanwhile, you know, we could remote view and Cindy sees people examining it in like a hangar somewhere and saying, yep, that was successful. We overruled what the um, pilot was able to do and we took them straight home. We took them straight to where we wanted to go. And that's, again, because the, the parts were made in China. So if you're worried about cyber attacks from China, why are you going to have, you know, computer systems in place that are made in China? Just one of those silly questions that, you know, people with common sense would tend to ask. You know, I was going to kind of mention years ago, I worked at um, I worked at IBM years ago. And it was really, really strange because I did have um, different bosses of a different ethnicity of the fine dining work country. And um, they oversaw everything. And they were very, I don't know, it was just weird. It felt like they were planted there for a very, very good reason. And they could see where everything was going. Um, they were very adamant about the way people did things. And I don't mean to sound prejudiced at all. But it was odd because the what we were doing is the working with these computer chips and these computer chips were going to various places around the United States and, and they were in charge of where they would go. So, you know, just felt weird. That's some interesting info from when Cindy was a hacker. Uh, and, you know, again, this is what they wear, literally, when they fluoridate the water. And yet we're going to drink it. I, I, and I share with you guys, and I have. I worked uh, for a company um, that was a pharmaceutical company m many years ago. And, uh, you know, I saw the way that so many of the pharmacists were absolutely abjectly terrified of, of you know, chemo and even had conversations with them and, and found, interestingly enough, that many of them wouldn't do it themselves. But yet here they were in the in the pharmaceutical industry every single day, you know, giving orders and, and compounding, etc. You know, the tornado that hit south of Greenfield, Iowa, was massive. This is stuff of... 
horror movie nightmare. What was it? Twister. Remember the movie Twister with the cow that went by in the air as it took out uh, multiple um, of those, you know, well, not just the structures and not just the turbines. It took out like everything. In fact, you know, unfortunately, we do have lo loss of life associated with this. At least three people that we know have lost their lives. You you got to have some sort of um, underground safety uh, zone basements. It's just it's just scary to see what we've seen, and this is just so destructive. It was a series of powerful tornadoes. Series now. This this is an area that's been getting hammered lately. Things just wiped out completely. In fact, uh, one of the things that hit me was in, in Greenfield, they have a curfew. Um, and you had to show ID to get into the area to prove that you were in the in, the, you know, an actual resident. And I think about the long list of, of events that we've had for like the last seven, eight years now. And, you know, you think to Hawaii, again, there's people that can't get to their stuff in Hawaii. There's people missing. There's so many kids missing still, unaccounted for. And how about with Katrina and Harvey and, and going back to those times? It's it's just been a nonstop barrage of catastrophic into the world type scenario um, orchestrated in my mind, or at least augmented, and many people are waking up to the fact that they are augmented. Well, you know, what they want to do, it's, it's right out there. We understand what they want to do. Uh, so this is, you know, talking about China's draconian 15-minute cities that are spreading quickly. Uh, in the UK, Oxford, as you may know, is being divided up into 11 districts right now with permissions required to leave your district. So even though, say, um, let's say you you look to the, you know, Oxford here for an example, or in the U.S., uh, as I was going to bring it up, you might be from one district in a city and you can't travel to the other unless you have ID and eventually, you know, obviously it's going to be like, why carry your ID? Just go ahead. It's just a, a small little pinch. It'll be in your shoulder. It'll be in your hand. And you don't have to worry about carrying anything ever because it's with you. Again, it's the laziness that they try to um, tap into our natural procl proclivity uh, to make things in life as easy as possible. As you see, car-free neighborhoods, well, you know, I have to admit, you know, there were some places in some of the uh, pl towns and cities I've lived in that were kind of like that, where you can go down into, well, like Farmer's Market in Sarasota, for instance, was, was a wonderful thing to, to visit and to walk through. And, you know, there'd be areas that were blocked off and, and you could go and, and shop and it was a great sense of community. And, you know, I... I'm not I've not always been the person that wants to just get out into the middle of nowhere um, as the energies get more intense as the separation between that which is natural and organic and free and that which is not becomes more and more intense. We're not going to be able to handle living in in the soup of EMF that's there. And there's another video I'm going to try to get to today to that's going to give you a little bit more of a deep dive into why too. Um, but we all know the EMFs can be very, very disruptive, albeit the the idea of having you know everything at your fingertips, never have to venture out anywhere. For some people, this is just their idea of paradise. You know, and I do love a, a good outdoor cafe, and I used to love to have, uh, you know, those like Spanish food, uh, tapas with uh, a nice glass of wine or a craft beer. You know, that was kind of the, the old life um, for me, but everything has kind of shifted as I've realized um, that, you know, there's so much that we are being bombarded with and as we do increase our ability to perceive that which is not 
always visible because th th we are changing. Our DNA is changing. And I hope I'm getting to the point without being too long-winded. We're going to find that we will not be able to tolerate uh, the disruptive disharmonious frequencies. And coincidentally, Omaha, Nebraska, which is, you know, in this area that we've seen a bunch of horrible tornadoes. As you see Omaha here and you have Des Moines uh, over here and this little... Uh, circle is Greenfield. You know, this is targeted to be a 15-minute city, Omaha, and we do have uh, dear family members living in the area. And one of our family members, her her yard was just absolutely destroyed by by this storm. And this was actually uh, the rain coming down. We've seen incredible hail too. Right. So, you know, if we could send there, there's a lot of people that are hurting emotionally that are just really their lives and worlds have been completely, completely ripped apart. And this is just awful. And I mean, this is the norm. This is what people are doing. They're having to have people come in and look to see what it's going to take to repair the damage. And in so many cases, you know, this is why, I mean, insurance companies just really make me nauseous because you pay in all this time, all this money, and they always have these little caveats. It's like, oh, we would cover this, but it's not touching the house or but it's, you know, it's this or but it's that. It's like these insurance companies have figured out every single way possible to not pay, <laughs> but they're still getting all the income. So that's really frustrating to me. And I feel bad for everyone who's going to have to be on the other end of the phone, you like, you know, their shoulders sinking and disappointment that they can't get the funds that they might need to help them clean up uh, what's been done, you know, by the control system. It's just really awful. So, I mean, a after this video, if you guys could take a moment and please send energy to everyone who's been affected, um, our, our EE Arts family members, and just everyone who's had their lives shattered I think it will make a big difference in um, how things come back together for people and there will be little miracles definitely that come out of this that that we can hold near and dear to our hearts and you know we can say well thank goodness for this and thank goodness for that where we are the makers of miracles we we can do this yeah this is right here Omaha Chamber of, of Commerce says they are moving forward and they're partnering with um, Metro Smart Cities and Metro Transit. It's part of, um, you know, a smart city uh, outlook on things, changing things. So the other thing with Omaha, too, is the fact that it's it's next to a very, very important military base, you know. So could this be an area that's being targeted with weather warfare for multiple purposes? You know, again, when we talk about... Uh, China and Russia being opposition in war. I remember just year, a few years ago, a lot of people would, would just laugh and scoff. And now it's pretty darn obvious, right? The, this is what they've been trying to uh, foment, create. Yet, you know, the Chinese people, the Russian people, um, the average people don't have anything against each other. I really don't think so. And I think they they try to create the tension. They're always doing this. They always try to create a scapegoat on one side and a scapegoat on the other side. Blame them. Blame them. You know this thing. This is how they keep us separate. And and this is very biblical. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I've got some really fun books. Was pouring through last night. Oh, gobbling up some ancient stuff because it's it's all right there. The other thing to worry about, too, or not really worry about, but just understand, is this can't be flagry uh, super volcano near Naples and the likelihood of any sort of eruption. Again, this, this when you're talking super volcano, when we're getting up to like VEI 7 events, then we are talking about events that can completely change uh, food productivity overnight or around the world there are some prophecies that definitely sound like either nuclear winter or like massive volcanic activity now you know what we had got from the guides 18 months ago 
was to be aware of volcanic activity going off and and what looks to be the start of WW3 simultaneously. Um, not saying that this is that and not saying that we're still on that time, timeline. I'm really hoping we get to the 4th of July and nothing major has happened. Things are still drawing out very slowly because the consciousness and the awakening is happening uh, quicker and quicker. And I think that it's getting tougher and tougher for these people to go ahead with their plans. I think they're constantly rolling on down the line as they lose the ability to go ahead with what was their primary objectives and, and their you know, top choice for uh, timelines. And as they keep missing them, uh, I think, again, it, it becomes more evident that humanity is waking up. And, and yet, despite, you know, their efforts to fluoridate the water even more, et cetera, et cetera, it, it, it's, it's, I think they're, they're losing the battle of any sort of trust the public has in the system. And it really is mind-blowing to me that people aren't demanding um, an end to it uh, as is. So this was the shaking. There was a couple of fours, I think it was 4.4, 4.2 we talked about yesterday in Italy. And in this particular area, this this was the biggest one in, in a very long time. And the prime minister is again um, having a conference and they're, they're seriously looking at this because again, think to Vesuvius and, and Naples and, and think to uh, Pompeii, you know, it's it, it would be so big if something like that happened that this is not really even hype. It could knock us back into a mini ice age. Uh, it really could. And and where it's located, again, food productivity is already becoming an issue because of everything that the system's doing. So this this would be something that would really add to that. And so, you know, again, everybody doing what you can to grow your own uh, food. It, it's, it's definitely, a, I think, a priority as much as possible. And you can do. Uh, like yesterday, we, we got like a dozen uh, tomatoes off this one plant in a bucket, you know. So you can do it. The bucket could go anywhere. It's, there's just a little sunlight. You, know, you can put stuff in corners. Our, our dear, dear friend Dave in the U.K., um, if you ever saw his apartment, and I did show a video years back, maybe four years ago, five years ago of his, four years ago, I think, of his flat, he has stuff everywhere. And it's literally in old pots, old pans, anywhere. I mean, it's it's like you, 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 you go to the bathroom at David's, it's like going through a jungle. Oh my gosh, he's absolutely amazing. And please keep in mind, June 4th is a day he is going into be heard about his his charity and i i don't i don't want to misstate anything but he is getting some property to be used uh for educational purposes and growing purposes to help feed the community so that's going to be heard june 4th at one uh his time but if you guys could please sit and give him a moment of of your attention that that all goes really smooth and thank you for everyone who put suggestions in the comments because we were asking for names a little a little while ago and the name that was chosen is oh my gosh i can't remember at this very moment oh it's blooming organic is the name that was chosen so i'm sorry i forgot to announce that a while ago um, uh, back to the super uh, volcano. Now, the energy that I got off of this, very serious, you guys. Very, very deep. Very, very serious. I was having trouble, like when I was asking about the energy, I was getting this uh, red, red light, thick, thick, um, thick blanket of energy. And I couldn't really pinpoint it. And uh, when I sat with it a little bit longer, the energy became very serious. So this is something to watch. This is something to try to hopefully mitigate energetically, if at all possible. Uh, something that's that doesn't feel like it's very good. I didn't like the energy signature I got off of this. So um, hopefully we'll get through it okay. Everyone will be okay. 
and it's just going to settle down and fizzle out. But as it stands right now, it, it's something to really pay attention to. It is. And I just wanted to touch going back. Um, I was going to touch on it in another video. Um, but not every place is going to stand for 15 minute cities, smart cities. Uh, there's going to be a lot of pushback. There is already a ton of pushback. We've seen Tennessee outlaw chemtrails. Wow, that's great. That's big. Uh, look right now at Tennessee and their legislature and look at Louisiana and theirs because Louisiana has has passed through both you know the Senate and its and its house as well that they will not listen to the WHO they will not listen to the UN or the WEF they will not accept any mandates from those organizations um, that they're going to ignore them. And so this is exactly what we're talking about. States uh, refusing to go along with things, uh, and even at a community level in towns and counties. You know, I think, again, we have to take back our own area in a peaceful way, and just simply through noncompliance and, and not going along with it. And, you know, there was another piece of legislature in Louisiana that um, we're trying to see if we could get information on where they were going to, again, make the sale of raw milk uh, legal because yeah, it's illegal in so many different places. And why is it, you know, illegal? Well, they'll, 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 they'll yeah, well, you know, hey, <laughs> so you could go get horrible, horrible things that will kill you really quick. No problem in many states. And yet, when you're talking about raw milk, you know, they want it pasteurized. What does it do? It destroys the enzymes, you know, and it, it takes away so much of the beneficial bacteria because they don't want you repopulating your gut in a, in a way that's going to build your immune system because they've been working so hard to tear your immune system apart all these years. That's the bottom line, you know, and now we understand and people understand and you know the sun too it's it's gone it's gone pretty quiet as you see now this is really low so here here we're, we're not even at a kp of one we're at like a half um so this can also um make it where some people can have issues and sensitivity as well it's kind of like a uh a very very quiet still room some people can't take that they need uh noise and activity and when we see this solar filament, this is huge. This is a very large solar filament, which is stretching across the southeastern quadrant. It's so long that it measures over 350,000 kilometers in length, transitioning into a prominence off the southeast limb. And as the sun rotates, that would come more into uh, direct line with us. It's a little bit below us, um, but still, Every now and then, these plasma-rich features can become magnetically unstable and collapse, leading to odd-shaped coronal mass ejections. But for now, it remains anchored in place. And I think I'll bring this up when we um, talk about the, the, maybe not the next, but the video after that that I have planned for you guys, because it, you'll be able to see and understand, I think, a little more clearly how the sun is awakening superhuman gifts and abilities in us and superhuman only again for a Kali Yuga, which is all we have all known in this particular incarnation. Um, but yeah, where we're going is really exciting. Uh, the Bronze Age is not dull. The Bronze Age is perhaps the most exciting age to be in in some ways because it's transitional uh, 200 quakes so that's settling down as you see new york state uh, this was a 2.1 up there well there's there's one over in kentucky a 2.7 you know there's been fairly consistent activity um, now this is also how a plume feeds so there is uh, uh, we know there's basically a river of magma that comes up through here through the uh, baja and Mexico and then curves off this way uh, so you know again right now it's relatively calm but there is another uh, quake a 3.0 this is up further in Italy as we were looking at uh, Naples which is down here south of Rome 
And as you can see, you know, this is a fault line which rips right through Italy. So, you know, Italy uh, is, is very, very interesting and significant in so many ways as really the first powerful empire m many of us become aware of as kids is the, the Roman Empire. Rome right there. And in reality, that Roman Empire has just shifted. Uh, you know, Holy Roman Empire and then the British Empire, the U.S. Empire, and now it'll shift again. And we'll see how that manifests and what it's um, going to look like. But you have this, which you know has the potential for massive quakes, massive devastation. Isn't it interesting? that in so many ways, and this, this also, you can see this whole boundary going through the quote-unquote holy land goes right through, right by Jerusalem. You know, the potential's there, and, and it's, I think, it's very symbolic in many ways for a complete restructuring of this these areas, you know, to say the least, a complete restructuring of these areas which have been so critical to the political and the religious structure of the planet, but wouldn't it be so apropos that these areas be reworked? Uh, we don't want any loss of life, and you know we want to pray for everybody in these areas. But you can certainly see how um, you know the reworking of an energetic and physical earth change way. Uh, could certainly be taken as more than just a little symbolism of both Rome and Jerusalem, right? If they were both hit with major uh, quakes and ground shaking activity and also just restructuring. Mm, I know, you know, we, we, we understand that the change needs to happen, you know, but how that change happens, um, it... I, I feel that can be directed how it happens and destiny is one thing but how you reach that destiny what what things come into play what turns and what twists of fate come into play to reach those changes can be managed I feel and it doesn't have to be ugly it doesn't have to be bad you know and and here you have this is making the rounds this morning Literally, they're talking about taking heads off and placing them on other bodies as, you know, where you're facing something uh, that they say is terminal. And don't worry, yeah, we'll find another body for you and we'll just simply place your head there thinking that your, your brain is the seat of your consciousness, but it's not. You know, the brain is just, again, it's just part of the operating system. Uh, anybody that's that's done any studying knows, you know, there is truth to follow your gut. Um, absolutely, the the receptors that are are in our intestines again uh, alone it will rival the brain. And yet, you know, here you go. Don't worry, it's going to be highly advanced robots that's going to transfer the human head onto a younger, healthier body. Where does the bodies come from? Are they going to be cloned? Are they going to be grown? Are these going to be people out of, like in China with the Uyghur camps? Um, you know, what's going on here? I don't want any part of it. You know, not afraid of leaving the body because consciousness goes on. Many people, many, many, many people, so many kids remember past lives. It, it truly is mind-boggling. So many kids can also see entities that adults uh, don't see over time because it, it you know, is, is something that's taken from them as they're told, you know, what is and what is not, what's possible and what is not. Well, again, we know personally many people, not just one or two, but many people that have been told by the medical system, sorry, there's nothing that can be done for you, and then they're totally better, totally better, and none of them went down the route of actually using the medical system, the allopathic system. Well, it's, you know, something inside of them just really starts screaming quite loud, saying, you know, this isn't... The right thing to do this isn't the right thing to do and and they start to follow their heart they start to um, connect to their higher self and they allow that to to lead them into a path where they can do something far far different than what the medical doctors told them um but that was that was like a really 
really morbid piece about, you know, transferring heads. That's just so gross. It's just so gross, but leave it to the control system. I'm sure they do much worse things. <laughs> it's, I'm, this is probably fairly mild in comparison to what's really going on in those control systems. But look at this puppy and kitty. Puppy is playing with kitty. I mean, in the cutest, sweetest way. I, you know, this kitty, he's just getting his first impressions of the world. He's uh, seeing how fun things can be. And these impressions are going to leave imprints on his little life. And it's how he's going to see things, you know, moving forward. And our children are like that. You know, our children may not always listen to what we say, but they watch what we do. They watch what we do. And this little kitty is watching the playfulness of this big dog. And because of that, he's probably not going to have a lot of fear. And he's probably just going to be a very playful, go-lucky kind of guy for the rest of his life. Isn't that cute? That's a beautiful thing. Thank you guys again for all your support. Keep putting your positive vibes and your intentions out there. If you're ever in any situation that's really scary uh, and just envision yourself surrounded in a bubble of protective light and ask for all the benevolent beings that can hear you uh, to come and help uh, protect you and your family because it, it does make a huge difference and and again when you put positive intention into anything that you eat or drink I would do that as well you know obviously in in certain households people uh, pray over their food whether you want to say it's prayer or intention uh, just visualize and ask for for the peace and freedom of the being that that basically shared uh, that vehicle because whether you're talking a carrot or a, a fish or a bird or whatever it is uh, there's consciousness there in in everything consciousness is in everything so again you know bless that which blesses you and it's just going to be a much more beautiful world. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.